part two of things that I've made. Last time I showed everything on that shelf that I've made. Today I'm going to show some of the things that I didn't get around to showing in that video. Things that I've um, been keeping in storage, things that were too big to fit on the shelf. Which, to be honest, I think is some of my best work. I'll show you some of the knives and things that I've made, some of the costumes, and I hope you enjoy. I have a version of Max's jacket from Fury Road. I tried to follow the general principles, but since this was for a different character, I tweaked it a little bit. So the character this jacket was for was for a, an assistant character in um, a movie that we're busy making, which will hopefully be coming out somewhere this time, sometime this month, I think. But this was a jacket worn by one of the side characters. And yeah, this is, a, this is a, another piece of apocalyptic gear I made. It is a scavenger's harness. It's a bit of a pain to get on, so I'll do that off camera. So, so here it is. Obviously, this would be worn with something more substantial underneath, something that would blend into the apocalypse a little more. But this is all, well, mostly old horse riding gear. I don't know where any of the parts are. There's an op shop I go to with a big tub full of old horse stuff. Each piece in there is $2, so it's cost effective. I have a big hook here for um, attaching stuff to. A wrench here for working on things. And old bullet casings to make me look fierce. I do want to do more to this in the long term. Put a few more tools on it, maybe some pouches. But this is where I am so far. And this will also be in the movie that um that jacket I showed previously is in. Getting it off is a little more easy than getting it on. Okay, I lied. Next is my homemade ghillie suit. So this was just made from mostly pants, actually. It's a pair of tracksuit pants, and you put your arms through the legs, and then it's all cut open, and it was also made from a pair of shorts, and also hemp rope. So let me see if I can get it on. So it doesn't look great from the front, the idea is that you lie down with a sniper rifle. So people won't be able to see you from the back. So this was just a quick little project. I think it took me a couple of hours to make, but I do not have a tutorial on it, unfortunately. And to be honest, I could have probably done a better job because that's what the inside looks like. It's um, pretty ugly. <laughs> Bits tied on here and there. Pockets, I think, are usable, sort of, if you can reach around to about your the back of your mid thigh. But yeah, obviously, you don't want to be doing that when you're trying to snipe people. Moving on to another element of um, movie making that often gets overlooked by the audience, at least, and that is <gasps> knives. I love knives. I always have. And I think it's one element of combat that really gets overlooked in movies. People tend to focus more on the guns, and the knives are just a sideline. But I love them, and I make my own. This is currently my sharpest knife, despite it being a thick boy. It is sharp enough for me to shave with, and I would love to see this particular design used in movies. Um, if there are any movie makers out there and you want to use this design, please let me know and I'll send you the specs. But I got the inspiration from this knife partially from Leon's knife from the old um, Resident Evil games. And partially from Tristan's knife in um, Legends of the Fall. But yeah, it's really heavy, but it's a good farm knife. Moving on to one of my weirder creations, I have this monstrosity. So... The blade design from, for this knife is from a game called Warface. I don't know if it's 
available on PC or Xbox or whatever. But I do know it is available on iPads because, yeah, I'm an iPad gamer. But I did tweak the handle design a little bit, made it more comfortable for me to hold. And I did narrow the blade down just a tiny bit. But it's actually surprisingly functional. I use it a lot. And currently it is my everyday carrier. Moving along to something bigger, I have these two. Beauty and Monstrosity. This one was actually the very first knife I ever made, which I'm still super impressed with because it is one of my better knives. It weighs a ton, it's big and bulky, but I've had this one for close to five years now. I've abused the heck out of it, and it's still really sharp. And even more surprising, I made it from mild steel, so I must have nailed the heat treat on that. This one I actually made from an offcut of steel from a different project, but yeah, I think it came out beautifully. And it's one of the more elegant knives I make. Usually I don't make things that are pretty. I prefer making stuff like this, stuff that doesn't have to look nice because I'm not good at making things look nice. I prefer the rugged, more beat up type look. But yeah, for something pretty, which was surprising, it actually came out okay. Moving along, I have this nice little karambit that I made. So this one is just the right size to put on a boot or on the back of a tack vest or any place like that. And it is one of the more, well, almost professional looking knives that I've made. I made it completely of steel because the steel was thick enough that it makes its own handle. And it's not incredibly sharp, but you could definitely cut someone with it. Most traditional karambits are double-edged, which means they wouldn't have this blunt part here or here. It would be one sharp edge all the way back to the spine. But those are illegal, and I actually prefer the more tiger-looking claw. Because, well, personal preference, and also, yeah, legal reasons. Moving on to some of my more wacky builds, we have this thing. I have no idea what to call this, so I call it my Bushmaster, but I don't know if it's a machete or an axe or a spear, maybe. But it works really well just for bush bashing. You can stab things, chop things. If you hold it here, you can actually use it like a knife because it's still quite sharp. And this hook actually works really well for moving uphill because you can hook it on branches, pull yourself up. So it's a good survival tool, and I think this would be really cool for a bushland survival character in a movie. Now for another weird creation of mine, the full moon axe. I have seen images of axes with a blade in a circle that were called crescent moon axes, which makes sense. So I thought, why not do a full moon axe? So yeah, I made it. It is definitely one of the weirdest things I've made. It was part of um, a mounting post for a gate. So I took it and I hammered out the loop. I did put some designs in there, but they've kind of gotten mottled into the rest of it. But for axe throwers, you need this. This will stick no matter which way you hit it. Okay, maybe not. But if you hit it anywhere, that it'll stick. It is one of my favorite axes to throw in my spare time, and it works perfectly. One of the more iconic things that I have made in my three and a half years of forging is this. A katana. Quote unquote. Looking back on it, it is an absolute abomination of a katana. Thick blade, Holes in it, rust all along it, which I wasn't able to grind out. And weird lumpy handle and an uneven guard. So I will be making one of these again in the future. I don't know if I'll do a tutorial on it or not. It might just be a little me project. But if you guys would like to see the process behind making something 
like this or better than this, let me know and I'll do a tutorial on it. Probably the best sword that I've ever made is this one. My... It's not technically a long sword. It is half long sword and half broad sword. Now the technical name for this is the bastard sword. Because it's halfway between the two. But I got the heat treat on this perfectly. I managed to make it straight and get both edges to line up, which again is a miracle. Bevel didn't really come out, it's practically non-existent because I don't have the tools to put a proper bevel in. But it's light enough for me to use. It balances about, about there, which works fine because it's only, the edge only starts up here. So if you want, you can grip further up the blade to get more twisting power. But I'll admit I was inspired by um, Henry Cavill's sword in The Witcher. After I watched the Marketplace fight scene for that, I knew I wanted one of these. Now, again, it's a horrible rendition of his sword, and it would not do his sword justice to call it that, but this is mine. This is my version of Henry Cavill's sword. Hope you guys liked the video. If you want to see me make a costume or a knife, let me know, and I'll show you how I make my knives. Until next time, see ya.